Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. We are looking at a Vendo 56. Stay with us on this machine. If you got a 56 and you're thinking about doing a few updates on it, uh, this will be the video for you. We're gonna go through complete. This will be my first 56. Believe it or not, I've never done a complete 56. I'm gonna grab some tools here right quick, hang on, and we're gonna get started uh, right away, right on the old phone gate. So. Welcome back uh, for the start of the series. We'll probably get to start on the coin mech kind of right off the bat. Very nice machine. This this one had a restoration done on probably 10 or 15 years ago. And the customer just wants to go all the way through it, get it really nice, and uh, kind of give you a little bit. Looks like normal. Been used, but uh, compressor works. So if you're doing any updates on your machine, if you're wanting to pull the cabinet out, put new insulation in it, maybe you've got a liner that's got a hole in it. Uh, we're going to cover all those areas on this machine. Uh, definitely uh, give you some ideas on what you need to be saving and what you need to be re-chroming. Get your bags ready when you start tearing your stuff off. Get everything bagged so when you get back on the project, sometimes months later, we will... Uh, cover that part of it what's going to get to the chrome shop what do we send to the powder coat shop start with the coin mech the assembly popped loose here get the rejector popped out of there there's two little tabs there that'll fold down and out and then we're going to go directly to the back we're going to take a couple of these things off here just to get them out of the way i would say definitely this machine's a collector's machine just because of size Anytime you get those smaller bodies, it fits in a lot of different areas in a smaller home compared to getting a 110 uh, bigger body like that one over there. This is a flag system. Let's loosen this guard up here a little bit. What I'm gonna take off here, I'm gonna just kind of back this off a little ways and then underneath, give you a shot here where it looks, you'll see a keyway right there. That keyway, we're going to push up from the bottom. And if you get lucky, you can catch that right on the end there, like that. And then you can usually just stick your screwdriver right in, and boom. You get her out. Not that big a deal. Some people dread it. Save these pieces. And that's the pin we just pulled out. Goes through just like that. We can go ahead and take this guard off. Now, in order for this to pull out, you got a piece on the inside. And it has the same kind of clip right here. These get a little stubborn sometimes. and you're loose. So we'll come back around this, to the front again and the coin mech or coin, whole coin mech as, assembly. I think there's three screws. One thing about once you've done enough coin mechs, they're all about the same. Some are coin exchangers where they'll take quarters. And there's one down here that looks like it does not have a screw in it, so uh, once we get this one out up here, uh, we're going to be good to go. Coin, cap catcher, I'll, uh, I'll send to the powder coater. Next piece to come off, we're going to take the coin door off. Coin door is off. So I usually try to get everything off that I know I've got to get to the chrome guys get my chrome done obviously the machine i take and get it sent to the get it sent off to get my blasting done on the machines but i try to always get if you got a coin mech you need to send off this is a good time to do it so one of the first things i'll take off let's do the lock on this one this particular one nice thing about it still got the original 
501 key. So yes, we will try to save every piece because we're gonna put that lock back in. You'll have three pieces that kind of come off there. Hang on to all that stuff. Uh, you'll pull these two pins here next, like so. There we go. All right, lock assembly's out. One more big uh, nut on the inside. Get it loosened up. And there's one washer that goes up against there. Remember that when you're going back together. This gasket here, uh, take those out. Don't leave those in there. You can get new ones. I'm gonna take the top bezel piece off, the entry bezel, six screws. I noticed something, I shouldn't have taken it off. Just by accident I did, but there is a, a spring that returns this up and down. Uh, they had taken a, a rubber band so it would pull that back up. So, you know, literally a spring goes there, right down to that hole right here. And that's what keeps that pulled back up. But hey, rubber band was working. We'll try to get the, there's a new rubber piece that goes in there. I always say start writing this stuff down. This will be a piece that needs to be replaced. You'll forget this a month from now that, oh yeah, forgot that. If you're writing decals down right now, why don't you send this to the sandblaster, coin return here, open bottle here. Probably should have been uh, one here if bottles are not visible. Do not put your coins in. Uh, that, that probably should have been on there. That's one that's missing. On this housing, when you send this to the rechrome place, try to get these off. These are actually in pretty good shape, but in order to get this thing done right, they need to come off. They're gonna charge you extra to get these off. They don't come off too bad. I'll try to take some off during the video here so you can kind of see what it looks like. This glass, go ahead and get you a new one. Uh, they get a little bit dingy, but they just pop right in there. So this will be going to the chromer. There's two bezels on here. I always take the bottle opener out first. Gives you a little bit more room. One thing about this machine being restored 15, whatever it was, 15, 20 years ago, it does make for stuff to come out a little bit easier. I've had some of these that literally had to drill out there, so stuck in there. That should pop right out. Boom. It's had a few pops opened on it, but I have these re too. They're all right painted up, but uh, they look very, very nice re -chrome. Probably not that much more to do those. So to get these little bezels off, you will see right there, I get in there with a, I got kind of a long screwdriver. Get in that one little piece here and you're gonna bend that little tab out just a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. You can buy these new. If they're in pretty good shape, I usually uh, get those all uh, redone. And you can kind of tell once you get it, it gets kind of loose. I can see this one here. Sometimes you can get it a little bit of help here once you get them started off and like that. So I try to, uh, before you send it to the chromer, take those tabs and just, you know, get them really straight out. So when you get it back, because they're probably not gonna, they're gonna clean them up, but they're gonna leave them alone. Just bend them tabs straight again. So when you get it, it's all in pretty good shape. Just like that. The littler one is a little bit tougher. Same, same scenario. Probably a little tough to see on video, but I get it from this angle right here. You can barely see it right there. But if you can get that one there started, and it's tough, if you ever get underneath it, get that one off, and it looks like, yeah, the other one's just about off already. So I bet it comes out right now, let's see. Be careful when you're pulling up so you don't bend these. Get up, oh, just like that. So the side ones are very, very small. Thank goodness, because they would be really a pain if they were long. I try to straighten those up too. 
This one go to the chrome shop also. So, coin door is done. It is ready to go to the bead blaster and get stripped totally back down to bare steel. Well, okay, I talked about getting the, this piece off. Let's see how it comes off. These foils are definitely replaceable. You might remember the scenario, sometimes that this reads differently. It says deposit dime or two nickels. This particular machine, I'd have to look. I could have, uh, it's, a, it's a large coin mech. I don't know if they've got the right insert on there or maybe the coin mech would not accept. Let me look at it right quick here. I believe that is a quarter slot. Let me see if a quarter drops down in there. It does say set for 10 cents. That's probably why that label is probably original. And it will not, it will not take that quarter slot. I believe the quarter slot and I'm, I'm just now getting kind of more familiar with this mech. I know the older mech's better, but this particular mech, uh, the quarter slot is all the way to the back. This back one, and when you try to do it, it will not allow that quarter to drop in there. If it had an, uh, a nickel, and probably that, that's the thing I should have been looking at. When you see, if, you, if it'll take quarters, typically it's going to have the row where you can drop, like the 81's got over there, it's going to have a drop where you fill it with nickels. I see the drop right here on this machine, but it does not, it does not have an exchanger on it, which would have a tube right here running here. So definitely a dime machine. That's why it reads what it does. So let's see if we can get, I'm going to try to get a little bit of a razor blade here and get underneath it like that. And that, keep that glue from coming off. Looks like it's gonna come off pretty nicely. Sometimes it don't come off this good. Chrome guys are gonna love you. And you might save a little bit of money with them having to mess with it, but usually when you take them off, especially on an older machine, they, uh, they, leave, they leave a lot of glue residue on there that's gotta be, you gotta work at to get it off. This one here's gonna come off pretty good, it looks like. Pretty tight though. Remember this in your, if you want to save them, you can, but two foils you need to get. And also take this piece off here. They do not want that on there when they get receive it. And if you can, if you're sending it to a, uh, your Cromer, wrap up everything individually. I don't care which one you're sending it to, but I guarantee you when those guys see that you've wrapped everything individually and you got a sheet in there that says eight pieces, and you got every one of those wraps wrapped with the eight pieces, they're gonna appreciate the detail, uh, how you sent that back. We're gonna swing over here and we're gonna come back to the machine. Next piece we'll do, uh, we'll, let's do the, the selection door. It's not too tough. And selection door's off. Believe you me, they come apart a lot easier than they do coming together. So what I'm gonna do on this, we talked about uh, what we're gonna do with the foil. If we go back with foil, I'm gonna get with the owner and just see where, where they wanna, if they wanna do, cut that out and put a glass in it. Uh, I don't see it being too tough of a deal, but it is gonna take some some things to uh, make that all happen. I'm gonna keep going here. Next thing, let's go ahead and take the door off. I showed on the the 39, or, yeah, the Vendo 39, how to take the door off. If you have one that just won't slide off and you're just struggling with it, um, this one here, you got a, a grab hold and boom, it's off. If you're struggling, put your piece of wood at the bottom. You can go back to my Vendo 39 when we originally took it apart. But as you see, things are moving quite quickly. I have found, especially on the 56, or actually on probably the 81s, I shouldn't say the 56, this is probably the first time I've taken a 56 apart on the door. 
You're gonna have some little screws here. We're gonna start with those. We'll probably leave that arm assembly kind of attached for now. So I'm going to show you where things go bad. You get in there and ah. Typically, and we're going to see this when we take this off, you're going to see there's, there's been a lot of moisture being held in this lower area. And as you can see, liner's gone. So I'm not going to get really rough with it. And I suggest never tear stuff up unless you know because yes i could go in there and repair this and i don't want to break this all up but this one here is definitely not good so those uh all those across the bottom are done they're all done so we're going to try to get what we can get off here there's one screw i think holding me up in this corner here i'm sure and that you can't even get to the heads. So we're gonna start at the top, work our way around, see if we can get the gasket pulled off. <clears throat> this was the original liner, and I think I said 58, if I remember right. It has a tag on here. The patent notice was July, 1957 original liner not bad so they did reuse it on the last restore and really if it wasn't for that bottom one i could reuse this top so if you're taking yours apart and you're trying to make that decision don't go in there and break everything off be be cautious with it because there's going to be a day that maybe we can't get liners anymore so what happens when you get here, if you can get it past, we may be taking this arm on. Just so, since our liner is, we're going to try to save it here. And I'm only going to save it until I know for sure. There's a little clip, comes off, arm, arm should come right off, like that. Don't lose that clip. I usually stick them right back on there. That's better. That's a lot better. Boom. And we are out. Look at that bottom liner. There's your issue. Is it sable? Oh yeah. I could save that if I wanted to. Uh, I could refiberglass that bottom, uh, drill new holes, and it would be good. But uh, we will save it. And if it's uh, available, it will get a new one. All right, so the insulation, actually in pretty good shape. I can tell by the pink. It was uh, definitely uh, definitely good 20 years ago, 15 to 20. And here's where your rust area was at. Not bad. I've seen worse. The upper part of this machine was very nice, but it was getting some moisture down there and didn't like it. We'll put some undercoating on it. We'll get, we'll re-bead blast all this. It'll show its weaknesses. We will save this gasket. There's that piece of wood I was talking about. I tend to leave it in there. Uh, my guy that blasts my machine, I'll, I'll just tell him, hey, just stay away from that, but We'll pretty well get all this back to bare metal, see where our issues are at. Let's flip this over and get our trim, our stainless. Pretty easy to get to while we're here, so let's just get right after it. And this stuff here, this stuff's good looking stuff. And we are gonna make that look like some new, new brand new. Hang on to those clips. I think you can still get them now. Funtronics. Or Soda Jerk Works. I think they're still available. I don't know about the stainless. I, I know they got reproduction stainless, but I could not tell you if you can get the, 
the stainless to replace, especially on a 56. Might be one of the older ones out there. We're gonna pull this out so we can get that last screw. Underneath this gasket, there's a set of screws. Now, you will see this piece is out. Let's get that one last screw out of there so we can get that chrome trim piece off. So if you're wondering how to get that trim off, you do have to take a lot of stuff off. There might be a cheat. Um, but that's a little bit of reality right there. You gotta take everything off and get that, just that one piece. We got a couple of things here left on the front and the door is gonna be totally stripped down. Part of the lock mechanism on these, save these spacers that are underneath there. Do not get them messed up. If you have to mark them for upper or lower, do it now. Good chance, since it worked before, it will work again when we go back together. And then your handle. If I was gonna probably do something on this, I'm tempted to do a chrome one. I, I might do it on this machine. I haven't really decided yet. I've, I've always uh, cleaned them up, recoated them, kind of like they did here. Chrome looks pretty cool though. So watch your spring. This is a pretty good one. Uh, you'll have a spring always that wants to pop out of there. Keep those all together. When you send this in, just send the, the front piece. You don't need to send the back. Okay, uh, this piece right here. When it had an electric heater, so if the machine was cold weather type climate, keep it warm. There we go. So what you have to do from the inside, pinch this down. Little piece there, that wire was still in there, so it made it a little tougher. But that little wire mechanism hung down here into the coin mech area kept a little heat in there so if it did have any anything that uh, would freeze up a little moisture in there that heat would keep that coin mech working even in freezing temperatures door is done next thing it needs to come out i go ahead and take the shelves out get them all done bottle rack uh, I always check it, turns just a little tight, doesn't fully release, nothing unusual. This has got a, a clutch head, so it's kind of two-sided, got a little area on both sides. Torx is later. Clutch head was probably 40s and 50s. All right, and rack assembly's out. That bottom trim plate, they call it a kick plate. That is called the basket weave style. And I'll have to check this out. It might be the only thing that was put on this machine. I'm more of a fan of the, just a stainless one. The basket weave's not my favorite, but I always give the customer an option which way he wants to go. All right. And it's not bad, you know, and probably the more I look at it, it might have been the original. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, I will put a new one on. It's got a few little creases here and there where somebody's probably kicked it. That's why they call it a kick plate. These little wafers. Can't, can't get the style anymore. They do work really good. They'll definitely have to be replaced. They're just, they're done. So you see a little tray like this, holds these. Has uh, quite a few slots. If I go ahead, uh, pulled out five. I like to have that thing plumb full. It just hangs on that rail. Definitely will send that to the powder coater and get that powder coated. To get the compressor out, obviously you got two screws here. I don't see the one in the back. So we'll go ahead and get the two screws out the bottom. Compressor should be loose. It is. 
I've got two screws up here. Once again, the clutch head is on those two. Just peels off like that, no big deal. You're gonna be putting all this back in new. It's just a plumber's putty is all it is. The evaporator is loose. So to get it up out of the cabinet, I usually get it started first. You'll see uh, the drain tubes coming across here. I would suggest pulling that tube that off. And let me show you something here. See how that's turning in there? Probably I, I end up breaking that, but that's where you always want to make sure when you put this tube in, it gets locked in tight. If not, be a place where you're gonna have a leak. And the ceiling ring is pretty well gone. And I bet, thought I could pull it out of there, but I couldn't. So we'll, go, we'll continue with the compressor here, but just a little thing here, make sure you get this out of the way. So you can pull this rust this way out. Take your evaporator, keep coming with it at the same time. Just do little jerks, jerks at a time. Everything, everything will come out of there. Now this evaporator piece has lost its screws out of there. It should not be coming out of there like that. That will have to be, uh, it's been sitting in some water. So we'll have to deal with that. Do a little bit of cheap metal work on that one. But get it down here where you can get a hold of it. Set it on top of that of the, the main compressor. And you're out. So in order to get the liner out, that trim piece one I don't think needs to come on. So if you got a 56, uh, that trim piece is the one that uh, your bottle rack attaches to. So I don't think it's what's holding it up. But these here have got to come out. This is a critical area. This is uh, where I can tell you right now, we'll probably be putting a, a new plate in this one because I see a rust out area down here. Definitely uh, put a new drain tube in it. Uh, a lot of rust out spots. This is a spot that you want to get taken care of because it's just going to cause water to get down here in this lower spot. So let's pull this cabinet out and see See how rough it is on the inside. Man. Just like that, your drum is out. Get your putty knife, something, and kind of clean that bottom up a little bit. But as you can see right here, that drain tube. It looks like it was still still working. Hang on to it. This may be a piece that you got to reuse. Hey, we have uh, we've got this uh, this six tore all the way down. Well, I hope this has helped on some people. Like I don't know if I can tear my own machine down. Hey, you can. Uh, this fifty six is going to be beautiful. Uh, there is some, some trim that we're going to take off yet. It just comes off from the inside, kind of like it did on the, the other, but, uh, save your ID plate H56A, which was a first year 56, how many bottles and H, if I remember right, H means for upright machines only with a coin mech. Uh, I don't remember what the letter was for without a coin mech, but they I don't think they ever made a 56 without a coin mech. So, but uh, thanks for uh, hanging with us this evening. Uh, we will get this to the, our sandblaster tomorrow. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll uh, see a little bit of where we're going to be at on this bottom base on this machine and actually on our cabinet. 
that's the only two concerns I got. Pretty straight body. There's, uh, it's going to be body work. It's going to be fairly easy, but it does have some issues on the inside. So, thanks for uh, staying with us. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, to give us a thumbs up. Post something in the comments if this did help you. But uh, hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for viewing.